If somebody were to ask you, why is it that only humans have successfully created civilization, what would your answer be? Some of you might answer, because humans are much more smarter than animals. Even though you made a grammatical mistake, you're still smarter than an animal, right? Well, by definition, humans have an average IQ of 100. Some chimpanzees and gorillas, our closest living primate cousins, have been shown to have IQs ranging from 70 to 90. So although we're smarter, it's not a blowout. It doesn't seem to justify why we're flying around in aeroplanes and using Wi-Fi internet, while the other great apes are stuck using sticks to fish out termites. So why the big difference? I think the answer is, humans have developed complex language and communication skills we found a way to pass on information to future generations. Through writing and other technology, we have been able to preserve human knowledge and build on it from one generation to the next. Imagine for a moment if the next generation of people were raised in the wilderness with no knowledge of previous human discoveries. No fire, no agriculture, no reading, no writing, no language, no science, no medicine, no electronics. Apart from being a little bit more intelligent, they would be no better off than the other great apes. Of those who do survive, the only skill they would have mastered by now would be finding food and water. Although physiologically they're the same as us, they've got no knowledge of any previous human development. Just for the sake of argument, imagine that the rest of humanity is wiped out in some sort of global cataclysmic event. The only humans remaining are the ones living primitively in the forest. Even if they stumbled upon some old tech, say a mobile phone or a computer, the devices simply don't work, as there is no electricity. The more curious individuals might break open the objects to find a hodgepodge of circuitry inside, but they've never learnt anything about electronic circuitry. They don't know what a resistor is or a capacitor. They don't have any idea whatsoever what this thing is supposed to be. As it is not food, they just leave it lying on the ground. Although this is an extreme example, the point is human civilization has developed over thousands of generations. The only reason we have any semblance of civilization is because we found a way to pass on learnt information from one generation to the next. In the modern world, we call this education. We send our kids to school to learn all about the stuff we've learnt from previous generations. Without education, there quite simply would be no civilization. We'd be back in the wilderness cracking open nuts with large rocks. In a word, education is essential to human civilization. But yet, in the modern world, we often don't treat it like it is. For example, here in Australia, there is only one state or territory which has fully funded public schools. I guess it comes as no surprise that that place is the Australian Capital Territory, where a lot of government officials work and reside. My home state of Queensland has the most underfunded public school system in the country at only 89.26%. Who makes up for the missing 11%? Parents, of course. Now in my reckoning, as a society, we either believe in free education or we don't. But we certainly shouldn't accept this half ass approach. At some point in history, humans realised that education was important, important enough that it should be provided free to all people. But in Queensland, it isn't. For example, at my children's school, they have to buy expensive uniforms. Now I don't want to get into a whole debate over whether school uniforms are necessary for schooling or not, but obviously they don't help students learn, which is the whole point of education, right? But putting that aside, why should parents be forced to buy such expensive clothing? A shirt for my son, which has the school logo on it, costs $32. A dress for my daughter costs $52. I mean, what the fuck? A near identical shirt at Kmart costs $5, the only difference being that it doesn't have the school logo on it. In my opinion, if the government or the school want to force students to wear expensive uniforms, they should either provide them free of charge or allow parents to buy cheaper generic clothing from Kmart or wherever. But $52 for a school dress that my daughter will grow out of in six months' time, fuck off. There's also school stationery and textbooks that you have to buy every year. This year it was like $350 for my two children, but throughout the year, the school often asks for more. Just last week, they asked for $30 more for art supplies. That's for each student. 
So with my daughter's class of 25 students, that's $750 of art supplies that they're buying for a single class of five-year-olds. I mean, what the f*** are they buying? Again, at Kmart, a big bottle of poster paint is only $2. Are you telling me a group of five-year-old little girls need the equivalent of 350 big bottles of paint to achieve their artistic goals over the next four months? I mean, it's absurd. Just at the start of this year, I was asked to provide three reams of paper just for my daughter. That's 1,500 sheets. What the f*** are they doing with the paper? Blowing their noses on it? It's just completely absurd. To be fair, I know exactly why they're asking for so much. Because they know that many families are simply not going to provide it. This paper isn't just for my daughter. It's being shared across the school to give to anybody who needs it. I don't blame the parents for not buying it. Queensland schools should be bloody well 100% funded by the government. Instead of rabbiting on about COVID-19 and the importance of social distancing and hand washing, how about instead give Australian students some free pencils and paper so they can actually, you know, get an education? Universities are supposed to be places where we train our brightest minds. The next generation of doctors, engineers, lawyers and academics. But instead, they're in the news for all the wrong reasons. Universities are Australia's biggest wage thieves. University underpayment so rampant, tutors instructed to do a poor job to avoid unpaid hours, former staff say. Punitive fees and job cuts. Australian universities have been transformed into giant corporations. It's an absolute disgrace what's going on at our supposedly most prestigious institutions of education. Instead of being centres of learning that harbour the greatest human minds, they've turned into havens of greed and corruption. Here's some more news for our most distinguished universities. Most international students would tell others not to come to Australia after coronavirus response. Good. Australian universities deserve what they get. Instead of focusing on education and the continuation of human civilization, they've chosen money and greed instead. In an ideal world, education should be made freely available to those who need it. If society needs more doctors or electricians or scientific researchers, then people who have the desire and the aptitude to learn those professions should be able to do so without having to get into massive debt. When it comes to learning and education, financial barriers should be all but eliminated. Because as I said before, human civilization only exists because of intergenerational knowledge exchange. You'd be forgiven in thinking that the only thing threatening human civilization at the moment is coronavirus, with all the news stories plastered about. But without a shadow of a doubt, in my mind, the human species will make it through this pandemic as it always has. Civilization will continue to coast along just merrily. But can society afford to put education and learning on the back burner? I don't think so. As I said earlier, education is essential to human civilization. It's the only way civilization can continue.